So the question was posed, how could we change views for uh, basically users? So I have a video that is basically how to make it so you only see uh, your company's data inside a bubble. So say I have a bubble account, I have multiple companies, and each person can only see that data um, for their company. But this video was about how to make it so only certain users within a company could see certain things. So as example, I'm going to make a couple buttons here. Button permission one. I'm just going to make a bunch of the same buttons. Button permission two. And then we will copy paste that again. And we'll make button permission three. We'll make different uh, admin levels, admin views, different permission levels is what we're going to call it right. I'm going to show you with buttons. Um, now, this I'm going to also do a drop down. I, you wouldn't normally do a drop down for this. You would do. Uh, each admin would have like a profile and in that profile you would designate so in this I'm going to do one two three for simplicity here and these will be my permission level okay and the idea with this is I'm gonna have it so that when I change a permission level whatever user it is has that permission level and I'm gonna save it to the active user on this one but you would want to do it to any other user so you would pull up a list of users have a view for that and then you'd have a list of permission levels for them that you would adjust so they would be a user or they would be an admin so a lot of times you see admins have more access to things like settings inside of your app whereas users would just be able to go in and enter data or view data you might even have one that all they can do is go in and see reports because you don't want them poking around but you want like the CFO or something to be able to pop in and see stats. So this will be say, say permissions. Cool. So and again this is going to change the user that's logged in but you normally will have a separate screen where you'd go in and you would say each individual user. So if I pull up a user right here, my users right now have a user role. That's a field that I made. Right? I could delete that and make a new one or I can just click create field and type in user role. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it user permissions. I'm going to create that one um, just because I want to do a new one for this. But in another video I do have a user role uh, that is designated for showing some things. So also sorry if you just heard my dog there behind me. So I have user role, right? Users all have user role now. They have the ability to be assigned a user permission. Sorry, we're going to focus on user permission. The uh, Sorry for the confusion there. This is my sandbox account, so I have a lot of different stuff in here. Um, in this video, we're focusing on permissions. You could call them roles. Uh, we're going to call them permissions throughout this video. So I have permission levels. I can save permissions. So I'm going to say this will count. Oh, sorry, dad in things, make changes to a thing, thing to change, current users. We are going to change their user permissions. The user permission will equal drop down permission levels value great and we're gonna make it so that uh, input should not be empty great so we have to click one every time we push save now what is me changing the permission level of someone doesn't do anything even though I have buttons that say it because um, I haven't designated these buttons to do anything I need to make them disappear if I'm not of the right permission level so that we're gonna set it actually is that permission one can see button one permission two can see permission buttons one and two permission three can see permission three two and one uh, we're going to do that so that we can open this up and we can see uh, permission three would be the highest permission you can see all of things permission two you can see permission two and one permission one you see button one um, just to show the variety um, but you could do this in any way you wanted you could have a shape over here and the shape could show up for one permission but not another. We just have to designate that. So actually let's do it with the shape real quick. Where we'll say the shape has 
Oops, sorry. Go back into here. We'll do conditional. Sorry. So click on the, the shape, go to conditional, and we'll do a condition. When current users, user permissions is one. This element is visible. And we check the box. So with appearance here, we want to go in and, and this element's visible on page load. No. So if I open this page right now, because my user that I am right now doesn't have, I'm not logged in as a user, I haven't collected a user to go in as, it won't show this box because I haven't designated that this box that my user that I'm in as now is a user. So I'm going to go here to users real quick in app data. So I'll go to users. And again, all this data right here, this is just stuff from other um, trainings I've done or my LinkedIn course. I'm sorry, my Udemy course. And I will just run this one here. Fake it, Mr. Fake. And we will give him a role or a uh, permission level real quick here. Great. So the box doesn't show up. Why? We don't have a permission level. Save permission. I saved the permission level as one. Now I have a role. I change it to two, that box goes away. And that's a very simple way to visualize what we're looking at here. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with the buttons too. So with the buttons, it's the same idea, right? I want these to not show up. Um, so what I wanna do is go ahead and say conditional, define another condition, when current users, user role is one element is visible check when current users user permission role is two element is visible and then when in current user roles user permission is three no there they did it Sorry, let me drag this up a little bit. Element is visible, and then check that box. And then I'll go back to here and I'll say elements not visible on page load. So I'll also go to this one, and this one's the one where we said number two, you will be able to see it only if you are with two. So we will do current users, user permission is two, element is visible, check current users, user permissions is three, element is visible, check, we go back, we make sure it's not visible on page load, and we go to here again, and we're going to do some more stuff, we're going to do some stuff with groups, because with groups we can make sure the page is going to look um, better. So let's do this one as not visible on page load, and it's only visible when current users, user permissions is three. Great. And then it will be element is visible. There we go. Preview. Actually, because we're still logged in as that um, Mr. Fake. And we will see what we have here. Because this should actually all show what we wanted to. So we will make our permissions one. Permissions one. Where did we mess up with the permissions one button? So elements not visible on page load, conditional. Current user's role is one, element is visible. Current user's role is two, element is visible. So why didn't we show up? Two, one and two showed up. Three, three showed up, but one's not showing up. What did we do wrong here with one? is one. Oh, do we add a space or something up here? Should just be one. Let's just redo a quick enter there and open back up there and see. Because I know I saved it as one last. Permission three one. Why is one not showing up? This is good too. Elements not visible on page load. You can show and edit in the element tree. Let's find out where I did it wrong. So, oh, it's off. 
on, on, on. So we want to make sure these are on. That will make sure that they are actually going to work. These are conditions. If conditions are off, they typically won't work. Reload this page. One, two, three. I'm going to move button. Button one is actually where it's supposed to be. Hmm. I didn't select the property to change. Yes, I did. Because it shows element is visible. Hmm. Oh. It may be that it's so far down in the list it's not going. Let's refresh the page here. Level one, version level two, version level three. Why are you not working? I'm going to remove that condition and let's define a new condition. Current users, user permission is one. Element is visible, element is visible. Now let's try it. There we go. I'm not sure why that wasn't working. Um, sometimes it, it helps to just go back through and redo something really quick. If it's something quick, uh, just redoing it um, can help you to make sure that that works too. I always just play with things until they work when I know they should. So what I have now is if user with permission level three is logged in this is what they'll see they'll see button one two three and they could access those buttons and do whatever they wanted um, inside whatever those buttons do inside your site you could have a graph over here you could have a shape you could have images uh, we're going to show you I'm going to show you what groups would be too and number one again permission group one why is permission group one being weird What's happening in my data? User permissions. Is not getting updated. But when I push this button, make changes to a user, user permissions you can drop down all this field. And do refresh you. Version of one works, 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 works. I don't know how I broke it. It made it not work, but it works. Maybe I was just looking at it wrong. Okay, yeah, it works. Good. Sorry for any confusion that may have been caused there. I thought I broke it, but I apparently didn't break it. So say I have groups I want to move these into now, right? So I have groups of things I want permissions in. So say I want to do a group here. So I'll put a group here and I will move this to the back. I'll grab this, make sure you're in the group. I'm going to shrink, shrink that. And I will put you in the group. I will. I'm gonna put one more thing in here, just to show. Only level one can see this, and I will do conditional current users user permission is one. Element is visible, check. And then we will go element is visible on page load. And then in this group, we're going to make this group invisible too. So we're going to say define a condition. We're going to say um, current users, user permission is one. 
100 user permission is 1. Element is visible. Make sure it's not visible on page load before I forget. But then we also might want to say, well, we, no, we don't might want to say, we do want to say um, that the current user's user permission is 2. And then we want this element to be visible. Now remember when user 2 is on, this element will be visible, but you won't be able to see this text. It's very important. And then we're not going to make it visible for 3. So, we want to collapse the height when the element is hidden. So what that should do, now, when I click that, this doesn't show for user 3 anymore. So when user 3 show comes in, this box should go up and these buttons should move too. Let's see what happens when the user roll is 3. Alright, permission 1. Level 1 can see this, so we know where we're at. Level 2. Level 2 should have been able to see that box. What did I do wrong? Group A, conditional. Let's move up. On. Okay, so we want to check for level 2 before we check for level 1. And we'll redo this and we'll see what happens. That's showing up there. Why is element is visible? Element is visible. Element is visible when page load's gone. Collapse it when it's hidden. User permission is two. Just re add this and see if maybe is two. Element is visible, check the box. I know our permission level is one, let's change it to two, three. So three it goes up like it's supposed to, but now all of a sudden two isn't showing me the box. It should be hiding this. This is supposed to go away, so let's just remove that condition and let everyone see it. Um, that can only be seen by one, which is fine. This button should be visible by two. And this should be visible by two. And turn that on. That was the problem. box isn't showing up. So I can see this group here. I can't see the box that because it's not visible on page load. So I can't see this group because obviously it's a group. And I forgot I had hidden the box from everyone but the first one. So this was working the whole time. I just hadn't yeah. It was working the whole time because it had a box in it. So now I can see a box in two. See, it's just you have to troubleshoot these things sometimes. So three, you can see those. Two, I can see these two buttons and the box. And then this right here, remember this is a group. And that's the group that disappears and we load number three. So my view is different here. And when I load one, my view is different here. But it's all one page and it's different access. So maybe this box here is a picture. Uh, person one comes in, they have to, all they do is they come in, they verify there's a picture, and this right text right here says there's a picture. So they push the button. Then it goes to person two. And person's two role is they come in, they see there's a picture. They also have to verify that there's a picture. They have another button down here that they have to check, or maybe it's a drop down or something, and, and it says, this picture is approved or unapproved. Approved or unapproved. There we go. They have a man their manager approval. Number three's role is to come in and 
they have access to seeing the initial picture or they have an access to seeing uh, whatever the marketing team changed it to. So you could use this for a variety of things. You could have it set up so that um, maybe you're making a CRM. Uh, inside your CRM, you have salespeople that can go in and they could see like a prospect's name, address, and everything. But maybe there's groups at your company you don't let see sales data, so that all they can do is see the customer list because that's all they need to see. Maybe you have groups at your company that only need to see financial data, so they go in and they just go in and they can only see all the opportunities that you're working and you can filter everything that way. So uh, this is powerful for keeping people out of areas you don't want them. So say user one, I want to be able to basically go in and view. Maybe this is a button to run a report and the report shows up over here and they can see this. Uh, maybe level two is the ability to go in, see the report, uh, print the report, adjust the report. Uh, maybe they can assign a task to somebody to do something or enter data that affects the report. And number three has the permission to go in and alter everyone else's permissions. So um, altering permissions is pretty pop pretty uh, powerful for um, changing how your app, app will app, um, operate. Um, I have another video I'm gonna look up and see um, if I have it on YouTube here that goes over this. I know I have it in a Udemy course that I made a while back, but the the idea with it is basically you give everyone roles and it cycles through a series of roles that say person permission group one would get something they would get this and then they would verify push the button it goes to number two they'd verify push the button it goes to number three they'd verify push the button and it works through like a workflow you could build that way um that's pretty powerful because you're able to go in and say um, this is a workflow we've designed and it goes through parts A, B, C, and D and it's a special process that's unique to a company so you can build that out for a company and then they basically just have a workflow for all the stuff that they're doing and you can at any point in time see where an object is in. So you might have a thing inside of a database, right? So we could define a thing, right? A thing in Bubble is something that we can store data in, right? So this might be a chair. And then, actually, I'll build this inside of data. So we might make a new data type. Uh, new data type, chair. And the field could be finished state. And we would have a series of things that we could put into here that would be it. So I'll call it text for now, but maybe we have drop downs that designate where it is. So unfinished might be where it starts, but it can move through a series, right? Unfinished in process and finished might be my three states. I also can say um, is painted. I could make that a yes or no field that gets filled out by one of the roles. So maybe permission group one goes in, they mark it as in process, they start making a set of chairs, right? So I have a quantity here now. So I have a number that I'm gonna store. And the number will be, this is how many chairs we have, right? So this is chairs that are marked. We're gonna create a thing called a chair. We're going to enter this thing that is a chair and we're going to have that. And maybe this chair is attached to a project. So we have a project that it's attached to. So we have a project that's going through, and it's a project of chairs that we're building, and we're going to track um, if it's painted and the quantity and the finished state as it works through a workflow that we've defined. And you can have different users adding in different data and only able to view it once it's moved through different stages of the process, which you could then also define with stage. So if you have um, stages here, you would then have it rolling through a series of stages. And maybe the stages are if this loads real quick, it's easier to just show it are the same thing as your permission group stage one stage two, and stage three. Each one has something else they add to that piece of data and alters it or changes the stage of it, which allows it to be completed. 
hope this was helpful for um, uh, for you to understand how you can create different permission groups and then what they.